Welcome back to Let's Take More Nick. This is Devontae. And I'm Eric. Let's take more Nick. Mm, y'all hear what I say. Let's take more Nick. For your mother and your brother, we're going to hear from Eric and Devontae. It's strange times and these are strange days. And it's strange people living strange ways. So expect Let's take more Nick. Eric. Have you ever looked outside or do you ever have moments when you look outside and you think just how beautiful the world is? I would say not as much as I should or maybe not recently, but yeah, I do. That's why I love camping and doing all that stuff. Obviously not a lot this year, but totally disconnect, man. I mean, I was, I remember during, during COVID, I think I you know, traveled to like seven or eight states and I camped like 80 nights that year or something. So I was like totally off grid. And I remember there was a stint I did. It was like five or six days where I was and didn't look at any technology at all. And I remember leaving. I was like, man, I've never felt this good in my life. I was like driving out because I built this like camper and I just felt like peace. Like I was in the moment. I've been in the moment for five, six days straight. And I could feel it coming back. I was like, oh, I had to get gas. Like all of a sudden I was thinking, oh, like, you know, tell my family I'm okay and all these other things, reach out to people. I was still working some, but it was incredibly peaceful. And it was weird feeling that anxiety as I kind of drove back into civilization. I'll never forget that transition. I think it was like July, 2020, but yeah, I do do that, but I feel like I'm caught right back in the rat rat race, you know, kind of forced to get back into the quote unquote rat race, (laughs) but you can't see that fucking eight times fast. And I think the world's a beautiful place. I don't think we stop and we look at the sky enough to realize how small we are sometimes <laughs> I have to look up into the sky and just to admire what we have here then it goes to think fuck we're killing it well if you're talking about the planet itself or like the well, greater universe well all of it I mean all of it all the way down to the insects like everything is just it's beautiful to think that we have this whole planet that we live on that's made perfectly innocent perfectly for us and then we want to fight and argue with everybody on this planet about shit that is so irrelevant. Well, I mean, I think we're doing that digitally, but I think people are kind of numb. I mean, I think people are not that, I don't think people are that confrontational as a whole today. I think people are like, so they're, you look around, man. Anywhere you go, people are buried in their phones. You know, I took the CPR class last night. Then I introduced myself to one person. Everyone was on their phone the whole time. I mean, I get it was late night. Everyone wanted just to get in, get it done, get out. Besides the teacher because I was the only one that had to do first aid. And, you know, so we actually got to, like, interact with one another for a little bit while all the other students were taking tests because they're actually in the medical field, like nurses and work at the hospital. I didn't have to take the test. So, you know, everyone, I mean, I think maybe one table spoke to kind of each other, but everyone was on their phones. You know what I've noticed, and this, this could be a hot take, I don't know, but for most people that I have encountered that are nurses are some of the most unpleasant individuals. These are people who I think are like new nurses. I've met some. I was not expecting you to say that, but continue. Expect the unexpected. There were, there are some that I've met that were like, oh man, I'm like, man, you're, I'm sure you're a great fucking nurse. Like you have a great personality. You're awesome. But all these other people who come in, like there's that short person that comes into the gym. You know which one I'm talking about? I can't say too much. Not that they're going to listen to this. Just in case they do. The short Napoleon complex person that comes into the gym. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes in and scrubs and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This person can't say hello or goodbye to anybody. And then there's like five other people who come in. That are nurses that you know? That I mean, like, you know all the people yeah, that come in. Yeah, I, I just like, come in and do my like, thing. You are the most unpleasant individual. Why would you choose a job where you have to deal with humans? You should be the ones that's like in the engineering where you're not talking to anybody. This is a hot take. Now, I'm not saying all nurses are like this because my roommate's a nurse and he loves to talk. He's good with people. I was going to say, I know lots of nurses that are very nice people. Yeah. It must be like this younger generation. These are like younger people around my age. I'm just like, bitch slap the fuck out of a nurse that's like a person like that. I mean, I think it's more of people, man. I wouldn't say it's necessarily nurses. It's individuals. I'm just saying, but from my perspective, what I have noticed (laughs) is that most that you've interacted that I've out of all other fields have been the biggest assholes. All right. That's fair. It's a hot take. That's just my perspective on the people I have met. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fair. I, it's funny. I just was, I was not expecting you to say that. I just think it's funny. I mean, they're also, I mean, the, 
I know that they also have to deal with a lot of bullshit. I oh, it's a tough it, job, yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, but it's like, yo, I'm one of the nice people talking to you. Mm-hmm. You can just live in that moment and be like, man, it's really nice to finally talk to someone who's actually nice and not fucking screaming at me. So I, I talked with this other lady who was a nurse the other day, and she came in, and I was trying to have a conversation, you know, like I do. I'm a talker. And she brought my mood down so much because I was just trying to have a conversation. It just seemed like she was so depressed and just like not. I was like, ma'am, I'm seriously just trying to help you out right now. She giggled a couple times, but it was still like, what the fuck is really is life really that bad for you right now where you can't engage in this moment right now? I think that's a lot of people. And honestly, I've slept with a lot of nurses. They're, they're freaks. I've. I mean, again, they did a study. They said that's the number one profession that will cheat. That's the number one profession that will cheat. Again, just, just I mean, from my sample size of like, eh, you know, I, I don't think any of them were with anybody at the time, but tell me. That's true, especially with the internet and all that. Who knows what the real truth is? But yeah, I mean, I've I've done some freaky stuff with some nurses. Now I've done freaky stuff with teachers and other other professions too, so. You know, we're not we're not here to to judge on the profession, but I would say more on individuals of people are having a go of it right now, man. People are having a fucking go. They're we've built such a convenient world, people are like questioning everything. Like they come in and see me. I'm busy as shit. And it's like you could tell it's like their brains are like little pinballs, like bouncing around a machine, just like they can't quite get it to stop because, you know, again, that's the human brain. You got a bunch of synapses firing around. We have wants, needs. We're all crazy in our own way. And it's hard to like get that pinball to kind of slow down. And I see that with so many people. A lot of it's purpose. A lot of it is who who am I? You know, as I've talked about before, what what am I doing here? And I think people are like and this is where we're getting a sample size of Colorado. I get everyone, you know, culturally it's gonna be very different, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you think that we we're creating we're creating it for ourselves and it's not so much what's actually going on outside of us where we're sitting here with our own thoughts and what we're doing to ourselves is creating the actual problem because we're all self-imposed and we think that other people are watching us when no one else is actually watching us. We're only caring about ourselves. And so every human is doing the exact same thing thinking everybody else is watching them. But with that, we start creating our own problems. Everything that's actually being created is all individualistic, but we think it's at a a, a group level of other people judging us when it's not the case. And then because this is a, a rant, and because we've created this individualistic thought, but every person is doing it, it has become a group problem. Wow. No, I mean, that that is correct. What, why is that the case is because we have... A lot of anxiety. We have a very anxious brain in a abundant world of a time where, again, our brains are haven't evolved for a hundred thousand years. We were living in caves, making fires. We weren't living one man, one woman. So that makes a big difference. It's interesting because if I would explain this to pretty much anybody else, what I just went on, nobody would understand what the fuck I said. Oh, hopefully, our listeners understand. Oh, I got listeners in this. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you broke it down, but I, I do believe it comes from a, you know, you can tie everything back to biology. We're all just self-imposed. I, I, I think that it's just us. It's it's the internal that's creating the problems. I'm, I'm starting to believe it's not, the, the technology and everything has really given us the easiest way out. To numb ourselves, for sure. To numb ourselves and to, to make it easy for us to see other people living a crazy life. Now, how we're using it is the actual problem, but it's all because, but now you're sitting there in your own head, which every person is doing. So I, I want to blame the technology for this, but I also have to blame the self for using it the way we do. Well, you could tie everything to religion, leaving a lot of Western culture. So, you know, if you were religious and you do believe in a God, whatever religion you're going to follow, you believed in a higher power, then technology wouldn't phase you because you're like, ah, like, you know, I shouldn't cheat, I shouldn't lie, I shouldn't steal. You know, you can carry and extrapolate that through the technology age, the craziness we have going on. You know, when you're your own leader, I'm very guilty of this. I'm a great example of you create a lot of problems for yourself. Do I look at my life in shame or, or regret or hate? No, 
I, I'm very good at being present, but I'm like, okay, you know, I never believed in God till this year. And then I'm like, oh shit, it makes a lot more sense. All these things throughout different cultures were written is because it was to help stabilize the self through times of turmoil, which I would argue we need now more than ever. Now, again, it doesn't need to be a white bearded man in the sky in Christianity, like the West. No, I don't think it has to be that. But again, you better put something above yourself, as I've said many times on here before, because that ultimately will make a better life for you. So while you're on this planet for X amount of time, knowing we're not going to be here forever, you're going to have a better life instead of a worse life. Now, do you think the reason why... Oh, this can be another long-winded fucking question. Jesus, why do I do that? <laughs> I think the reason why it's left is because it has traditional values to where we would say men have to be men, and now we're kind of getting away from men being men. Well, I mean, we don't need each other as much. I mean, we have a very modern infrastructure, and obviously feminine products, social movements, all these contribute to a factor of no longer a need for... You know, if anything, I know someone like my sister, I love you, Hannah, but would get fired up, well, you know, has been fired up over, you know, in the Bible when they talk about, you know, Eve being created from Adam's rib. That fired her right the fuck up. I mean, she's not going to follow something that sounds what we call misogynistic of just like, I'm not created from no fucking man. Like, I'm an independent person. I mean, we're all created from man, right? Man has seed. Woman develops seed. Oof. That's a hot take right there. But I mean, I mean, if we... No, if you go by bi- biology, absolutely. That's yeah, exactly, we are all created from man, but we are not created without a woman. Correct. So I don't know why, I don't, I, uh, maybe I'm ignorant, I don't know, but I don't understand why that's such a problem if I say we're all created from men, because literally we are all created from men. Mm-hmm. But a woman is, is the the water in the, in the sun, like, mm-hmm. or just the seed, really. Mm-hmm. You develop everything else. Correct. So it's kind of a cool thing to think about. I think it's cool. I don't think that should be, I don't see how that's considered misogynistic at all. We need each other. That's what that tells me. Well, I mean, people do not believe they need each other now. I mean, we've become so independent that. Well, what's going to happen is, you, what the fuck is the name of that movie? It's with, it's called Her, I believe. You ever seen it? It's where this guy ends up having this like phone and they want to get married, and he's like... No, I think I've heard of him. Yeah. I never saw it, it but... It's actually a great fucking movie. <laughs> I think it's Joaquin Phoenix that plays okay. the main character. It's a crazy good movie, but I think that's what's going to happen. I think people are doing that to a small degree now, is having relationships with their with their technology, video games. Oh, that's 100% what's happening here right now. Everybody's on a new episode of My Strange Addiction. That's what's happening. I mean, if we go back fucking 15 years, someone sitting there playing video games the entire time saying, I love, I love my video games so much, I'm romantic with them. You're on fucking My Strange Addiction. But now, fuck, you're in... Normal. That's normal. Mm -hmm. You're normal now. I can name 10 men right now that were more interested in their devices than ever interacting with a female. I mean, at all, anyway. Different levels of degree. Some humans in general, some just women, some both. I mean, I think they've showed, you know, post-COVID that, you know, the incel men or whatever they people name them, it went from like a million to like seven million men in the U.S. And I believe that because I can look around and be like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And how many dickheads are there like me out there? Mm. Probably a couple million, too. At least if, well, be beyond it, I'd argue probably 70 million of us, too. And to levels, different levels, obviously, but it. No, I mean, it's making for a very interesting society, how we're going to kind of hurdle this. Because again, you know, with Western culture is built on a nuclear family and we are absolutely not, we're kicking that in the dick. You see, you see it still, but it's becoming rare and rare for sure. And it creates a lot of problems. It doesn't help. <clears throat> I think we're already, we all know my situation. It doesn't help society as a whole for sure. We're all trying to help ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Again, it goes to everybody is so individualistic. Mm-hmm. I feel like I just turned that word into fucking syllables when I said it. But that's that's what's happening. Everybody is just self-imposed. We we don't think of others. And sometimes I think we get too wrapped up in the self, to where, which is where 
anxiety, I think, comes from. It's being too too aware of oneself. Smart man. Right. Very easy, very easy to do today. You're, you're right. Yeah. I mean, that's me doing tea. I would argue that's a lot of people. I know that's oh, a lot of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. But then, I, you know, there's people that are sitting there. You know, we always talk about men playing video games. That's just, I think that's mostly because you and I don't understand that. So we use that, even though it's, we don't think anybody that plays just video games is a bad person by any means. I think we just don't understand why you would spend 40 hours a week playing video games. That's a full-time job when you could be utilized. If you have that much fucking free time, you probably need to get another job if you already have one. Yeah, but their dopamine circuits are being tripped to think they're accomplishing something. But they they realize that they're at the end of, after they're done playing, they realize that they're not happy. I think sometimes while they're playing, they realize they're not happy, and it's not it's not sustainable. And what's what really makes you happy is fucking human interaction, and probably suffer with some form of social anxiety, which is why they result to video games. And I think we have to we have to get people out of that and stop because you're there with yourself that most of that time too. Like if you're in the lobby or something, you're still sitting there with yourself. And there has to be a moment in your time where you're sitting there like, damn it, I wish I could just like go out and talk to people. I mean, again, I probably, but also you know I get it because it's the same circuit that I've been hooked on for over a decade of just blowing backs out left and right, watching heavy amounts of porn. Same thing. It's not constructive, it's antisocial, it's, again, not good for myself, not good for humanity. I don't feel good during, well, maybe instantly, you know, just like playing a video game, you feel good maybe during, but then after you don't, you realize you didn't actually accomplish anything accomplish it. because I'm not actually trying to procreate with these women. So that becomes problematic for everyone's mental health. So I get it. I mean, I really can empathize with someone like that because it's incredibly hard. Stopping is, for someone like myself, very difficult. And again, I know other men that struggle with this stuff as well, and I know it's very difficult. So it's, can you just willpower your way through it? But, you know, I find it's easier if you're just like, all right, well, what if there's something about yourself? And obviously, you know, having a kid, that helps. But ultimately, it's like, okay, what, what is God? What does God look like to me? I still haven't quite formed that yet, but I think of, okay, I can misbehave myself drastically, or I could think, okay, there's something probably greater than myself that in the long run, the rational, my rational brain can kick in and say, you're going to have a lot more success and have much more fulfilled life long run if you can override instant gratification, override it and understand you're like, okay, use that rational brain to get, you're getting these insane amounts of dope we've never experienced before. And no one's talking about, again, because they're enormous drivers of revenue. Do you think that masculinity has taken a hit in today's society? Absolutely, because, again, and I, I would say technology has a huge role to play in that. Be, uh, yeah, social movement, sure. I mean, we can talk about, you know, the feminist movement or whatever, but I would argue it's way more. It's just so easy to turn to instant gratification over a screen and the fact we have such a convenient life that essentially we're, you know, emasculating men. But I do believe socially that doesn't help either. So you get the double whammy, you got porn, video games, digital only fans, all that shit. And then uh, at the same time you have, you know, essentially now you're competing with women. You're not really working with them. You're going to college. You're getting the same degrees. You're you're literally competing in the in the workforce, even though biologically we're still very different and our brains are wired very different. I mean, that's we've studied that. One of the nice thing about modern science is we know that is true. Again, doesn't mean that we're not equal. It just means that our our natural wiring, it you know, it it allows us. We, we have certain strong suits that women don't have and vice versa. Now, of course, there's deviations to that. And it doesn't mean that, again, one sex is lesser than the other. It's just literally the fact that we're different. Now, that being said, I do believe that cowardly, non-masculine men are very dangerous for society because I would argue I'm one of them. Well, I'm, I'm obviously changing that in my life, but when you have that, and I am in the way that I only care about myself. Not necessarily like cowardly towards like women, like, you know, I love women. I love, you know, all the things, but I, I, it's more, I, I'm only thinking of myself. That's not a masculine feature. I don't want to take responsibility for anything in my life. That's very dangerous. That creates a dangerous society. That's a lot of men. Yeah. But not, not taking any responsibility. I think that's the, that's one of the number one things to be a man, in mm -hmm. my opinion, is taking responsibility for what you've done. 
if it's wrong, just admit that it's wrong. I think if you make a lot of excuses, you're not really so much of a man. Because a man's not going to make excuses. If they if they did something wrong, they're just going to be like, yeah, okay, I fucked up. That's on me. I I did this and I shouldn't be doing that. And you hold yourself accountable. I don't think a lot of men right now, I don't think a lot of people in general, but we're talking about men. I don't think a lot of men right now are holding themselves accountable. And they're making jokes off of shit instead of listening and trying to understand other people. They make you ask somebody, oh, why do you play that many, many hours of video games? And they'll make some type of fucking joke instead of like, no, like you understand, like it's an actual problem. And you're paying how much in rent and like, yeah, you're making- Living in your parents' basement yeah. or whatever. It's like, yeah, you're like you've said before, you're making just enough to, to get by. And like, why do you want to make enough just to get by and just play video games? Like, that's not real happiness. You're gonna be, you're gonna realize, dude, when you hit fucking fifty, and you're still doing the exact same shit, and you're alone. What the fuck did you do with all that time in your fucking twenties, in your thirties, to build yourself? Well, that's where you see suicide rates go through. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Both, both sexes. One hundred percent. I would argue you could tie it all back to this idea that masculinity is more or less frowned upon. It's bad society. now. It is bad. Yes. Mm-hmm. Quote unquote. You know, if you're less masculine, you're you're. It's better for society. It's absolutely not true. Oh, it's not. It's, true. you know, as we we talked about this in the last episode of, it doesn't mean you you know masculinity is not being abusive towards women. It's being a strong frame, knowing that you we are the expendable sex. We are we. If there's a war, we go to war. We get killed. No one cares. It's still women and children first, and in, in the lifeboats if the ship's going down. Totally okay with that. But if that is the case, we need to maintain a frame that is very different than a female frame. Oh, absolutely. You don't want to. Some of these people are into like, but they say they're into like these feminine men. Nothing against you feminine men if you are. But they're like, oh yeah, I like these real feminine men. It's like, oh, I wish you were a little more manly. You know, what is that? What is that more manly to you? It's probably somebody who has a backbone, who stands up, who doesn't keep saying yes, dear, to everything that you say. It's the little, it's the little things, you know. Nobody wants a yes man to be dating. I, I used to, dude. I used to be a fucking yes man. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. So I know what it looks like, and I know what not to be. And I never used to hold myself accountable. And so I, I'm, I don't, I don't understand why masculinity is so bad or so frowned upon now. Okay, I guess I understand it, but I don't understand it because we need it. Society functions better whenever a woman is feminine and a man is masculine. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. Society will crumble if we have if we have nothing but feminine men. You know how easy it will be for another country to come in here and wipe us out. You know how easy. That well, I is? think the other countries are dealing with the same issues, so. It's it's a it's a global thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You I can only speak on America. I can only speak on America. Mm-hmm. But that would be that's the whole thing. It's like if you have feminine people, this country will be devoured by another country with more masculine men. Easily. Won't even be a fight. A lot of people will just run away. For what? If if you're in a fucking if you're somewhere and someone tries to like rob you rob you of your purse and you're with your man, and your man doesn't step up, you're going to look at him differently. I promise you that. Someone breaks into your house, and you have a, a really feminine man who's not going to step up there. Well, I think I talked about this already. <laughs> They're not going to step up. You're going to look at him differently. And then you're going to be wondering, man, I should probably get, like, a man. Because we're just, to be honest with you, if someone breaks into the house and your family's in there, the man's afraid yeah he's still scared but he knows he has something he has to protect he's putting himself out there to protect you and the kids or just you whoever it is like that's what you want even though he he pushes through his fear to make sure that you're okay because he's supposed to do that as a man and he it's in his instinct to do that doesn't mean he's not afraid because trust me that motherfucker is still afraid but he fights through it because he knows he has a bigger purpose feminine man i make up a story will not be doing that because he's he's just like he's just like you he wants someone else to he wants somebody else there to defend him. That's my rant on feminine men. No, I mean, you're, well, I'm sure that, I don't know how many people listen to this now, but that will get some backlash, but I agree. I mean, I wholeheartedly agree, and honestly, you know, it, it's crazy to kind of watch it happen, to because, again, the more you kind of feed into it, as I've talked about many times, is 
someone like myself of just like, oh yeah, like deep down being like, ah, well, nothing really matters, whatever. Like I'm not going to protect or provision or provide except for myself. And then if I kind of feed into the movements, because I'm fairly masculine framed, I physically look masculine. I have a masculine voice, but then I'm also like a feminine, you know, very kind. You sound like a bitch. Just, you know, whatever I do. Yeah. You know, whatever. We're all, the, we're all, everything's kosher. I mean, you can blow backs out relentlessly. I mean, that was a, I'm, I'm not stupid. Like in terms of from a reproductive standpoint, I'm killing it in terms of what my brain is thinking, because all these movements have caused is it's again, put the, the ball in the top 10% of the men's hands. So if you are a masculine, essentially feminine man, you know, you, you really can just, I mean, just feed into it. And it's crazy what this sexual attention you can get as a guy is phenomenal. Cause deep down that reptilian brain, you know, a female reptilian brain is still like, oh, I want taller, stronger, you know, being able to provide, protect, provision, but also I want my freedom. I don't necessarily need this person in my life. Mm -hmm. So from a pure biological standpoint, they are getting the best quote unquote genetics. Well, but because of birth control, they're not actually getting pregnant. That's why they're, what is it, like a third of men under the age of 30 are sexless, you know, are virgins or haven't had sex in two years. And I know that statistic's true. I want, if you are a, a man who is a virgin and you are 30 plus, please hit us up. If you're, if you know anyone who is a man who is a virgin at 30 plus, please show them this podcast and have them hit us up. Yeah, good luck with that. That would be fucking fantastic. Yeah. I just, I just want to fucking know. I want to know what it is for them because it could be something different. Now, if they have like a, a disability or something, I, okay, I understand. But if you're like a heterosexual man who's making probably decent money or maybe no money at all and nothing's really wrong with you, I want to know. Well, that ties back into everything we've talked about. Women only find about 10% of men attractive. I would argue even less than that, maybe four. You got technology, being able to connect with one another. I mean, I see it everywhere I go. Everyone's buried in their fucking phones. And yeah, this is kind of the outcome of it. Again, nothing ever happens overnight. I will say this is a pretty quick change. I mean, the iPhone was invented in 2007. All this stuff became very ingrained in our life in my early 20s, so 22, 23. And you're, you're, you can see it. it. Again, it's a slow shift. It, nothing ever happens overnight, but... You know, in the grand scheme of time, it's been ten years, and you're you, you, they've done the, they've shown the data on it. I mean, it's phenomenal to see. Essentially, we're going back to our more natural biological state, you know, being included, and that's going to create a lot of problems. I mean, if you're talking real long term, I mean, trust me, if I'm in terms of if you, the listeners want to know how I'm thinking, you know, I'm gathering resources right now to buy land, property things definitely not in a metropolitan area mm -hmm. and you know near a water source i want to participate in society i i do have hope because of podcasts like this you know people talking about it i have hope we can kind of write the ship like i'm writing my own ship in my life right now but if people i mean i see them buried in their shit like it's good luck trying to take away people's individual self you know or what they think is the individual self and that is not going to be conducive for the long term. So that is really where my mind is at now of like, okay, not like a doomsday scenario of just like, I kind of want to get away from, we'll just say the, the hustle and bustle. I don't have a lot of desire to be interacting in today's culture, mm. honestly. I mean, I do, but also like, I understand that socially things are changing very, very quickly. Mm. And again, I, I, I hope, I don't think it's necessarily like a doom and gloom thing. I think it's more of a, okay, well, what's going to be conducive long-term if I decide, oh, I already have one kid, if I decide to have another kid or two, you know, how would I want them raised? And then probably not in front of an iPad. And I don't necessarily know if I'm like, oh, just kindergarten through K through 12, you know, especially I talk to a lot of parents nowadays. It's a free for all in the schools. It's just wild what these kids are doing. So, yeah. It's interesting because I'm actually been thinking about moving and then moving to like a, a city, but like outside of the city, but eventually getting land and like having like my own ranch or whatever and like growing my own food, slaughtering my own animals and like doing the whole thing. And then hopefully having, it's like a commune, I guess you would say, but like where like my best friend live right there too and like we all like raise our kids together but we teach them the value of how to actually take care of something 
that's been that's been on my mind a lot recently and we might shift to that again this could be a peaceful transition i think again we're we are not the only people talking about this no, stuff no for sure it's not you know it, it's i see people just numbing themselves now so we're all numbing ourselves yes and what is the outcome of that i just see a lot of suicide i mean honestly if i were to predict why our population goes down yeah it could be something natural it could be i, I don't think it's going to be war i think it's going to be people killing themselves I mean, I know, again, no war. Yeah. I know more people that have killed themselves from death than anything else in my personal life. Mm-hmm. So I see, I do see us going slightly back in time and making things are going to become more, I guess, tribal to where, like, what I was saying is mm-hmm. you have, like, you have, like, your, your best friends and, like, all of your family living on one little land. And, like, you have your animals and stuff like that. And you guys kind of just like protect, protect each other. I mean, you go out into society and shit, but I think that's what's going to happen is everybody's going to end up having their own little spots of land where it's just like your closest friends and your family that all live right there. But then each one of them is going to have like a, I think that's where we're going back to. I think that's what's Mm going to happen. Well, that's very plausible. I could definitely see that happening. But but I think that would be more (laughs) suitable for society. I think people would be more friendly i think people would start to mind their own business and like the people who really are like kooks and shit they'll be noticed more and then you can start being like oh well i have my own and now we start fucking trading shit again right we mm-hmm. kind of we start getting away from currency oh yeah we, in our in our lifetime do i think the u.s dollar will like hold up as like the world currency like it is right now now i'm not gonna say for sure like oh absolutely not but no again i i think people that the thing that kind of keeps the glue together right now as if people do not want to lose their conveniences. People are getting very lazy, very soft, and they don't necessarily have the, you know, wherewithal or the real drive to go out and create this crazy change because people are like, eh, like, do I really want to lose my roof over my head in the water and my Netflix? No. Eh. People aren't dumb or my grocery stores because, again, if you really start really turning society not saying it won't happen but you people understand okay well we're gonna lose all these conveniences too and it's like man that's not good and again is that gonna be good watching people get wiped out for that too because that more than likely would happen as well yeah that's probably not good either again uh, i i don't have this there's definitely no solution to this it's more of the self-awareness of exactly what you talked about is well i would argue there is an attack on masculinity it is important that people understand, you know, men and women are very different and that, you know, whatever you choose to do, fine, but ultimately you cannot escape the existential self. You will struggle no matter what. You can get married and have the two kids. You can go travel the world. We have those choices now, especially in Western culture. Great. Either way, it's hard. It's going to be hard. So you kind of have to decide, you know, pick your heart. You get to really pick your heart now, and that's very difficult for people when given endless choice. Yeah, I mean, other other generations' heirs have not got to pick their heart. That's a new TV. <laughs> that's a TV. That's a TV show right there, or a shirt. Put it on a shirt. Pick your heart. I like that for us, man. We should get that. Let's tackle our neck. Pick your heart. That's awesome. Boner. We have options. Okay. No, but yeah, I think. How do you how do you go about picking your heart? That's that's a tough fucking son of a bitch for people. Which direction are you gonna go? How are you gonna? Because you have to go through something. You have to you have to go through something in order to grow as a person. Because if you just have an easy life your entire life, you've learned not a fucking thing about life at all. Mm-hmm. So yeah, pick your heart. Pick a situation that's again coming out of your comfort zone. Right, that's where all of your growth will be made. Is in the zone of un, and so that's picking. That's picking your heart. Whatever that is for you, I don't know. Mine was probably moving away from home and not knowing anybody and trying to create a better life. But I, I enjoy change. I enjoy uncomfortability. What is what is somebody else's? What's your what's your like for me? Mm-hmm. When I choose what's hard. Mm. Well, right now it's like not watching porn, not fucking going on dating apps, blowing back cell. It's always been my thing. You know, being, you know, you know, thinking outside myself. I mean, not just being like, oh, absurd meat suit, time to have fun. Yeah, I get a lot of people think that way. Cool, but I mean, the long run, is that going to make me 
happy or fulfilled now. So I'm going to pick my heart and be like, all right, well, I'm going to participate and you know, I'm going to, I'll always rail against the government probably, you know, in terms of, you know, I don't necessarily agree with politically, again, left or right, what is happening. Do I do believe that so much is withheld from the American public? You know, they essentially since the seventies have been just printing money to solve the problem of just like, oh, okay, well, we just print money. If we just print money, like the money, you know, then people will spend because we're just, our reptilian brains are like consume, consume, consume. I mean, hell, that's why what we're recording September 1st, 2023 in the face of unbelievable inflation, high interest rates, everything else, people are still fucking spending money like it's their job. Now, I do think that American consumers, American consumer is slowing, but it, it is phenomenal. I mean, I'm just like, whoa, like people really don't give a shit. They don't really have a good control over their brain, but also I can look at it and be like, mm, well, if I was, I could easily be out blowing backs out left and right. That's me not having control of mine. We all have things to work on. So going back to pick what's your heart, you have to figure out what that is for you. Knowing that again, at the end of the day, you don't get out alive. You, you will not get out alive. Well, we have to understand is that nothing in this world really matters as much as we like to make it out to be. A problem like at the end of the day we're dying at some point in time we're all dying so if what's stopping you is the thought of somebody else judging you you have to remember that person's gonna die sometime you're gonna die at some point in time why don't we just live the happiest life we can and not care what other people think about us honestly just be just be yourself and i think that's where a lot of i think that's where a lot of men are, are having an issue right now take take responsibility to no definitely mm -hmm. and i'm not saying what i'm what i'm saying is the reason why most of you people you people oh my god i could hear some backlash off of that is, you, is that a black man <laughs> saying you people? what i'm saying is the the individuals who play video games all day 40 hours i think the the reason why you're doing that is trying to escape yourself and not getting to reality of the world because you think other people are going to think less of you for some reason for who you actually are a lot of people who are quote unquote nerds or nerdy don't think that you fit in society when you do and who gives a fuck because you're going to find that group of people who are really like you. I, I'm i kind of a nerd with how I speak. I ask stupid ass fucking questions all the time. I mean, I, I go out and I'm fucking, whenever I'm at work, I'm just randomly singing or making weird noises. But I'm comfortable with who I am. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. Honest to God. That's how it's got to be. Because you're going to be much happier when you find out that you just being yourself even if even if people don't understand you, it doesn't really matter. Because I went for a, a long period of time where I was like, man, people really just don't understand me at all. And t even to this day, there's tons of people that I know ha have no idea who I am, and they just make up assumptions based off of based off of how I talk, and they just making up assumptions. Oh, he's arrogant. Blah blah blah. It doesn't fucking matter. I don't give a fuck because I know who I am, and I think everybody else out there should be comfortable with who they are and not put so much pressure on getting acceptance from others. No, I think that's, that is definitely true. But again, you got to get people to stabilize themselves and be like, yo, this is, especially living in this fucking metaverse we live in now, it's like, that's not life. Pull yourself out of it and think about how you would behave when you're just walking around without your damn phone and just be like, mm, yeah, I probably wouldn't behave that way. And you really can stop and think about it. Going back originally to what you said when we first started looking outside and just being like, Everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful time just to be in the present. I mean, this, this world could just end right now. What are we going to learn? What are you going to do about it? How, however you act around like your best friend is how you should act all the time. That's what I think. I think that's exactly mm -hmm. how I act on a daily is exactly how I act around all of my best friends. There's, I am never any different. And there's people that are going to drop out that may like you or may not like you. But you find the people that you actually gel really well with. And I think that's a problem. I think a lot of people aren't acting like themselves, so they can't find somebody else who acts just like them or accepts them for who they are. So now you're set up and you're really alone. Just be your fucking self. I promise you, if I meet anybody who listens to this, I promise you this is exactly how I act. Whatever you're hearing here is exactly how I act out there. I talk shit. I'm goofy. I ask weird fucking questions. I ask random fucking questions. I make random noises. Hates down on nurse. 
I'm just saying, man. No. I'm just saying. <laughs> they seem to be the biggest fucking assholes that I've met in my life. Hopefully some nurses are listening to this. That's just, that was too far. I hope some nurses are listening to this. They can <laughs> prove me wrong. I've met some really sweet nurses. I mean, you live with one. Yeah, I mean, like, he's cool. I like, I, there's other people out there that I've met that are around my age. It's mostly the ones around my age that I'm talking about. Fucking assholes. No reason. Get the, get the fuck. Dude, if I, if I go to a hospital over here or anything and I see one of those people I'm talking about, I'm like, hey, man, you got to. You got to give me a different nurse and be honest with you because your personality is not going to fit me. I need, this is a, if I'm in here, this is a, probably some hard shit, some vulnerable shit. I don't want no personality ass motherfucker talking to me. I want it to be lighthearted and a good time. Okay. If you're going to tell me you have cancer, I need to be by somebody who's got a good personality, not by a fucking asshole. All right. Be yourself. Be goofy. Let stop. Let the fucking ego go. Let the fucking ego go. That drives me crazy. Yeah. Everyone has a fucking ego these days. because Basically because of social media and they think they have to act a certain way. No, it's been around before that, but it's amplified. It's the amplifier. Technology yes, amplifies thanks. everything we talk about, for sure. It's an amplifier. Choose your hard. Choose your hard. So if you can't choose your hard. And be in the moment knowing you can't go back in time. There's a so medication for it. Hard right now. So Blue Chew, if you're listening, you know, send out some sample packs. We know some people that could use. Not us, not us, you know. But we would dabble if you feel inclined to sponsor us. Blue Chew, choose your. Hey, Blue Chew, that's an actual fucking thing right there. That's what we can do. I'm gonna cut this. Choose, yeah, because now I have a fucking idea. I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. All right, appreciate everybody that actually listens to this. If anybody is out there and you're on Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever you listen to us on, if you could leave a review and you can rate us, that would be much appreciated. Honest to God. Follow all the socials too. It's all less tech at less tech. All you gotta do is type us in and we will pop up. Appreciate all the love that is out there. And I thought for a second that I didn't hit record and we recorded this whole thing. I was about to have a fucking heart attack. But yeah, <laughs> choose your heart. Love you guys. This has been Less Tech More Neck and I am Devante. And this is Eric. Bye bye. Less Tech More Neck. Mm, y'all hear what I say. Less Tech More Neck for your mother and your brother. We gonna hear from Eric and Devante. It's strange times and these are strange days And it's strange people living strange ways So expect, let's take more neck.